So here's the deal. You're, you know, down with a bunch of friends at that all-you-can-eat lobster house. And you're talking about SETI because, after all, it's kind of interesting. You've always thought it was a, a nifty experiment to try and find if there's any cosmic company out there. But one of your friends says, yeah, yeah, but you know, what about the Fermi paradox? Now, what's your reaction to that? Do you say, well, I've never heard of that? Or do you say, well, I don't believe in it? Or what do you say? Well, let me tell you a little bit about the Fermi paradox. Only a little bit, but it's all you're going to need to defend yourself in these frequently arising situations. Now, there's a story. Some say it's apocryphal, but the people who say that are just trying to show off with their Greek vocabulary, that in about 1950, the famous American-Italian physicist Enrico Fermi was having lunch at Los Alamos's cafeteria with a couple of physicist friends. He's sitting there eating his sandwich when he looks around and he says, so where is everybody? Now, what did he mean by that? I mean, did he want more company? Did he want dessert or, you know, an extra helping of ketchup? No. What he was saying was this. Look, the galaxy's big. Everybody knows it's big. About 100,000 light years across. But 100,000 light years, well, that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. But if you could build a rocket that could go 1% the speed of light, that's pretty fast by current standards, but after all, we only invented rockets about 100 years ago. Imagine an advanced society that could go 1% the speed of light. They could cross the entire galaxy in 10 million years. And you say, well, that's a long rocket ride. Yeah, but what if they stopped along the way and set up, you know, set up some sort of society on suitable planets? Well, if you figure that they do that, that they find some intermediate stopping place, a rest area, if you will, for interstellar travelers, and they spend a couple of thousand years setting up their society. And, you know, then some of them get a little bit of the wanderlust. And then they go off to the next star over again at maybe only 1% the speed of light. Let's assume they never build rockets that are any faster. Well, this is a pretty simple calculation. And it turns out that if they, you know, don't make any mistakes and go in the wrong directions, it will take them on the order of 10 million years to have visited every star system in the galaxy. Now, if they do make mistakes and they sort of wander around, you know, randomly like crazed ants, then it takes them 30 million years. It's hardly any different, right? Now, you might say, well, you have a 30 million years colonization project. Who's going to be able to do that? Well, we don't know. But the point Fermi was making was that if anybody ever wanted to do it, they've had plenty enough time to do it. The galaxy, after all, is more than 10 billion years old. In fact, it's closer to 13 billion years. So if they wanted to do it, they could have done it. They don't all have to do it. Not everybody has to have that desire for empire. But if somebody has had it, there should be aliens everywhere. We should see evidence all over the sky. And we don't. So how do you reconcile this apparent paradox, the Fermi paradox? Well, there are entire books devoted to possible solutions to the Fermi paradox. Let me give you a couple. One is, there are no aliens out there. Now, if you believe that, you probably believed a lot of things that you probably shouldn't believe. Because it just seems hard to believe that there's nobody out there with, with a trillion planets in the Milky Way and there are no other societies with technological capabilities. Very unlikely. The second possibility is, you know, there are plenty of aliens. And in fact, they're here. No worries. Where is everybody? They're here. They're buzzing. They're, you know, they're crash landing in Roswell, doing other things like that. Well, that doesn't seem very likely to me, in any case, either. But here are some other things that maybe you've thought about and maybe not. Frank Drake has suggested they're not going to do it. They're not going to colonize every star system in the galaxy because it takes too much money, or if you prefer, energy. You know, for the same cost, they could give everybody on their planet the really hoity-toity lifestyle. And why would they want to go somewhere which might not be as good anyhow? That's possible. Another possibility is that the galaxy is a little bit urbanized. There are some places that are better than others. Well, I'm sure that's true. And as a consequence, maybe the galaxy is urbanized. And the aliens are camped out on you know, the Mi Miami beach of the Milky Way, wherever that is. Okay. <laughs> Another possibility is that they turn inwards. They're not worrying about going out into space, you know, expanding their frontiers. They're interested in the inner frontiers microengineering, developing thinking machines that fit into, you know, the size of a domino or whatever, that their focus is inward, not outward. That could be any of these things could be. There are at least a hundred explanations for why the galaxy is not obviously 
colonized. But the real power of the Fermi paradox is to say, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe you don't believe this, maybe you don't believe that, but, but are you sure that your reason for not colonizing the galaxy applies to everyone? And that's hard to believe. So the, the Fermi paradox still has some currency in science circles, and perhaps it should. On the other hand, for me, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's an argument that doesn't go anywhere. Having said the Fermi paradox, you know, you, maybe you ruin the dinner party, but you can't really decide what the correct answer is. And from that point of view, I think the best thing to do is look for the aliens instead of arguing about whether they might or might not be out there.